Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are uh, new to us, thank you very much for tuning in, spending uh, 15 minutes of your day. Uh, all we ask is click a like. That's it. Take a second, guys. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. Help the channel out. It helped to spread the word of technical analysis. So all the thing we do is click the like, like button, share, subscribe, and uh, thank you very much for all uh, your support. Uh, really, one one really quick announcement, and I think it'll be live either today or tomorrow. Uh, as most of you guys know, um, I am approaching literally the next um, you know couple of weeks, um, my 25th anniversary. It's pretty pretty kind of a big deal. Um, I've been doing this since 1999. Uh, a lot of war wounds, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of headaches, a lot of everything. But you know what? At the end of the day. In a weird way, you kind of don't want to change a thing because you went through this. Uh, because we are you know, celebrating our 25th anniversary, or at least my 25th anniversary, uh, Access to Trade has been around for 14 years. Uh, for all you guys who are interested, we are doing a one-time thing, uh, 25 bucks, right? 25 bucks for 25 years. Uh, come in, look at, the, you know, look, check out the pivots for a month. Uh, it'll cost you 25 bucks, literally a, a, a ham sandwich and a cup of coffee, uh, especially with inflation. Um, see if it's right for you. you know, see if it's right for you. We're, we're doing it for um, a, a batch of people. Uh, if you like it, I think it'll be something very, very unique to your approach to the market, kind of look at the market in a different way. Uh, if not, again, uh, all you can do is try everything to figure out what's the best fit for you. So hopefully you guys will take advantage uh, I believe the link, it's either going to be today or tomorrow in the comments section uh, on the YouTube feed. So hopefully you guys will uh, check it out, right? Hopefully you check it out. So uh, let's talk about it, right? So this morning, complete euphoria, right? We'll get to the pivots in a second. Uh, this was definitely a day of a two-sided uh, market. Uh, the bulls won the morning. The bears won the afternoon. And now we have to decipher what happens next. Um, you know, we talked about it on the weekend video, and this is the most important part. I've, I've been talking about this on and off now for a couple of weeks, but on the weekend video, you know, we, we talked about potentially how every market ends, right? And how every market doesn't, you know, tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, by the way, this is going to be the end of the move or the end of the short-term move. It's just going to do it. And what we saw... Uh, this morning was complete euphoria, um, out of control euphoria, whether it was ARM or SMCI uh, or NVIDIA, right? It was just going nuts and it didn't stop there. And again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Just ridiculous, ridic ridiculous chasing price action today. But the point is when you look at a market like this and you see how easily the pull was around lunchtime, you kind of realize that the institutional money flow is not there for the significant pull. What I mean by that is usually when I'm trading, let's just use Tesla as an example, right? In a normal market. When I'm buying Tesla, Tesla usually goes up a dollar, pauses, goes up another dollar, pauses. If there's a pull, right? If there's a pull of the futures, maybe it'll come in 60, 70 cents, 80 cents. A name like Tesla, and I'm saying, I'm just using this kind of as an example, a, a, tr a stock like Tesla or a stock like NVIDIA, well, let's use NVIDIA as better an example, shouldn't go up $7 on one candle and come in $5 at three minutes later. It shouldn't do that. And what it basically it shows you is that the institutional money flow has been coming slowly out of these trades, slowly, right? Slowly out of these trades. Because you keep this in mind, if you're a fund manager and you're long NVIDIA anywhere, anywhere from 500 to 550 to even 600, don't you think at some point they're going to be coming out of the stock? And that's exactly what we saw today. We saw the, when, it, when we saw the aggressive pulls, the aggressive pulls were worth five, seven, eight dollars. They weren't worth a dollar, dollar and a half consolidation go back up. And that's a very, very, very specific sign of a potential. We just started talking about that on the weekend video, potential that we talk about around about top. Doesn't mean it has to happen, but you have to learn signs. And what these signs are, 
uh, is the leaders resting, right? What do we see today? We saw the leaders resting, right? Microsoft today rested. Um, Apple today, not that Apple is a leader anymore, but Apple today, it was tired, right? Amazon, after a really, really good run, backed up in, back into the five-day moving average. And again, can this mean something? Could this mean nothing? We don't know yet. We've seen this scenario several times just in the last two weeks. You know, we see aggressive pulls, and what happens the next day? The next day, we start rallying again. We saw that on uh, January 31st, followed by the next day of explosion. We saw that on February 6th, next day explosion. And now we saw that today, a really, really aggressive pull. Because if you see uh, what the Qs did from the morning run-up, okay, they traded all the way up to, let's just call it 439 to around 434, which is the lows, that's a pretty big pull. The, you know, the Qs shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have a $6 rally one way and then a $5 pull the other way. It's just, it's just a lot of volatility really does show you uh, that more retail is being represented in these at least moves, recent moves, the last uh, day or so, that institutional money flow continuing to bid up the stocks. Now, here's the key, right? Here's the key, absolute key going into tomorrow. Number one, for this to be a significant, anything more than a significant pullback, okay, the Qs need to lose the previous day's channel. That's it, guys. It's the most basic rule in technical analysis. If a stock wants to go higher, it has to take out the previous day's highs, and it has to build on those previous day's highs. If the stock wants to go lower, well, let's flip it around. It has to take out the previous day's low and has to build below the previous day's low. So if we look at the cues, there's two areas here that we definitely want to pay attention to for tomorrow for a potential. Again, for a potential. I feel like I've been using the word potential just because, again, you, you, as a new trader, especially going out to new traders, you can't anticipate. I've been saying this for, for, for years. You cannot anticipate a potential blow off top. You can't participate uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a situation that's not playing out. You can't, in other words, squeeze water out of a rock. So you have to know your levels, right? Once you know your levels, then you know exactly what potentially could happen if those levels get breached. So let's talk about those two levels for, again, for a potential, right? Potential day two pull. I know it sounds crazy. It'll probably never happen. But just in case, this wacky, kooky, crazy market, right? Just in case it does, we have to be prepared. So these are the two levels we want to watch for tomorrow, okay? Number one, we want to watch this 3, 434.50 434 area on the queues. If they start building this 434.50, uh, 434 level below the channel, it could get pulled. And we want to also look at the previous day's channel as well, because the more days they get engulfed, the higher probability, the stronger the sell-off potentially could be. Again, if there is a sell-off in the first place, we don't know. We're just trying to be prepared for it. So you have the 434.50, 434 level today, and then you have Friday's low of 4.33. And again, use if you're unsure about today, well, definitely use Friday's low as a barometer because that's the five-day moving average. And if you're watching this broadcast for the first time, the five-day moving average, at least for me, has been the shortest-term sentiment for the last 24 and seven-eighths uh, of, of my trading journey, right? 25 years is going to be in a couple of weeks. So the moral of the story is, guys, be prepared. We, we don't know if it's going to happen. We've seen several times just in the last couple of weeks, we've seen aggressive pulls after euphoria-type run-ups. And all we've seen next day was, well, continuation of the rally. Thank you for your, you know, thank you for your weak shares. Buy the dip, bro. Buy the dip. So we don't know, right? So that's why, again, we're always preparing on both sides of the market. But definitely watch, uh, especially last Friday's low of this 433 level. It would also confirm the five-day moving average. And then we could get more uh, of a back test going into uh, tomorrow's session. Uh, if you look at uh, the SPX, right? Again, Friday, we had our first close over 5,000. Now we have our second close over 5,000. The only issue is we put it in inverted hammer, right? An inverted hammer is usually a, a, at least a short term. I don't even want to use the word sell signal anymore. It's a short-term pause signal. Is that fair, right? It's like a pregnant pause. I think it's more pause than anything else. Nobody wants to use the word sell because that's not what it is. There's no such thing as a, as a, as a concrete sell signal. But this inverted hammer is definitely something to pay attention on. So watch tomorrow the SPX. If the SPX starts losing uh, 50, 16, right? 50, 16, 50, 17 level. Yeah, that's going to cause more selling to come in. So definitely be prepared on both sides of the market have a two-way game plan, Have a, 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 always remember anything could happen in the market, but as long as you are prepared for those anything based on specific levels, 
I think you'll be okay. So let's talk about today's pivots. I mean, incredible moves, incredible moves. And I'll give you guys some, obviously, some ideas uh, for tomorrow. So Apple, I was watching. We talked about Apple on the weekend update. Obviously, never got to the 190 uh, or 191 macro level. Uh, so obviously, this didn't confirm. Coin went nuts. So that, pretty much everything went nuts. But Coin, uh, 144.56. I believe we talked about Coin on the weekend update. Uh, is the 50-day moving average needs to confirm. Here was Coin. So it took out the 144.56 and went all the way up to 150. Absolute huge move. It actually has held up pretty well here. So uh, if good, you know, it would be kind of good if this thing could consolidate a couple of days above the 50-day moving average. But nearly a $7 move on Coin uh, was absolutely amazing. Uh, Amazon gained the initial push above 175, traded up to like 175.40s, 175.50s, and it kind of got pulled along with a lot of other debated names that we talked about with the leaders, right? The Microsofts of the world, the Googles of the world, and stuff like that. But, you know, again, nice run. Nice run on, on Amazon. Probably needs a couple of days rest. Uh, Arm was obviously the rock star of the day. Uh, not only did it confirm 1782, and I believe we talked about Arm on the weekend video, it confirmed the earnings highs, right? And this is what happens, not this aggressive, but this is what happens usually when the earnings highs get confirmed. So they took out the 1780s. That was that was Friday's channel. And then it confirmed the earnings highs of 126.80s. I'm telling you, at one point, for all you guys who were trading this thing in this thing or just watching this thing, this thing was just going up in dollars, guys. And this thing went from 126 uh, all the way up to 164. Just an absolute insane move. Again, this is where the euphoria uh, really kicked in. Uh, Disney, about a dollar move on Disney. We also talked about Disney uh, last night on the video. Uh, it had a dollar move before uh, everything came in, so not, not a bad move on Disney. Uh, AMD, nice pop on Disney. Uh, nice pop on AMD. 75.10 needs to build. It caught a, like a dollar and change trade in seconds, man. That, that's how crazy it was. So here was the, here was the break right here. It took, oh, excuse me. Here was the break right here. The 75.10, right? That was Friday's channel. And stock went to all the way up to 7740s. Obviously, got pulled, uh, pulled towards the end of the day, just like everything else. But you can see the euphoria just go nuts. Uh, AI, I believe we covered AI also uh, on the weekend video. 2963 Fridays and the pre-market highs needs to build. Here was AI uh, and closed really well. So it took out the 2963 and traded within 30 cents, closed within 30 cents of the 3155 highs. Just a really, really big move. Still strong momentum. Uh, in this name as well. And here was um, Meta. Remember last night in the video, I said I want to give it every opportunity. We finally got that opportunity. Really nice move on Meta today. Uh, 473.60 and 474.20 last Friday's highs needs to build. The buyer came in for the 480s. Nice move on Meta. Went, you know, all the way up to the 479 level again. And then the guy just kind of pulled uh, with everything else. So again, great value today. Really, really great value today. But the question now, because of this aggressive pull that we saw with the queues, well, can there actually be a day two? Now, before you throw eggs at the screen and say you're on crack and this, that, the other thing, I probably am and would probably and we probably won't. But let's play crazy talk, right? Let's play absolutely crazy talk. Let's pretend the market actually can actually go down. I know it sounds nuts, but let's play crazy talk. So if we do pull in you want to start looking at the stocks that had the biggest run-ups, right? There's the biggest run-ups and then one with the most obvious natural pivot of all. The obvious run-ups were NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, definitely watching it below today's channel, okay? Definitely, definitely watching this thing below today's channel on NVIDIA for tomorrow. Again, you had this inverted hammer. Again, it's a short-term, I want to use the word sell, pause signal, uh, SMCI, obviously of the two, NVIDIA is probably a better trader just because of the liquidity and the spread. So if you have to, if I gun to my head, I'm, I'm always going to trade NVIDIA over SMCI. But these are the two kind of stocks that if we do get pulled and there is a day two, this has the highest potential for, for a gravity uh, trade. And this is the one with the natural pivot, right? So Tesla had its dead cat bounce. We talked about but the potential uh, short-term bottom. It rallied for five days. It was sloppy as hell. It got rejected at the top of the range today, and it closed right at the five-day moving average. Here's the key for tomorrow, okay? And this is where the na very few natural pivots to the downside take place, but this is definitely one of them. If Tesla starts losing back the five-day moving average, then guys, look how much room we have all the way back down to recent lows. So this is definitely one 
Uh, I am going to be paying attention to to very, very closely, considering it's also my favorite stock. It's usually not not really, a, I'm going out on a limb saying I'm going to pay attention to it. So uh, definitely watching Tesla tomorrow for a potential uh, another pull. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, SMCI, and there's a whole slew. If you go through a whole NASDAQ 100 names, you'll see a whole slew. The key is for these stocks to lose uh, the previous range. But let me give you guys uh, give you guys a couple of names uh, that I like for potentially for tomorrow that have nothing to do with technology. Look at Goldman Sachs. Look at this chart on Goldman Sachs, right? So you keep an eye on this. There's a day two uh, in Goldman Sachs, this, you know, in, 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 uh, in the banks. This thing could wake up. Look at General Motors, right? I know it's crazy. You turn on the broadcast. Now we're going to be talking about at t maybe Ford next, right? But look at General Motors. Had a great quarter consolidated for two weeks. Hey, what happens if it takes out the earnings highs? It won't turn into an arm, I'll promise you that. But hey, that's a pretty good looking chart. Look at a name like Toll Brothers, right? Look how long, guys, look how long this distribution is going all the way back to December. If the homies, right, the home builders have a second day of, of buying, this is a gorgeous breakout. And the last one is a company that will never go on sale, for God's sake. Never, never go on sale. Canada Goose, right? Canada Goose, is attempting to get above this uh, daily supply, the 50-day, uh, the 50-day uh, SMA. Oh, excuse me, the 150-day SMA. I know it looked a little weird. If they can get above the 150-day SMA, this thing could wake up as well. So keep an eye on that. So again, guys, we are set up. Uh, can we have a day two poll to be determined? Right to be determined for all you guys who are taking advantage, guys, and you want to see. Uh, if the pivots are right fit for you. Again, guys, I think the link will be in the comments section. I really look forward to uh, exposing you guys to the PS60 theory and looking at the market for a little bit uh, different point of view. Guys, God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.